Sex and games and laughs galore. We bring fun straight to your door. Pop culture talk and trivia. History and new video games. Movies, music, wrestling too. Sports and stories just for you. Every week a brand new show. Come along, it's time to go. Soapbox for dashboard, oh hey. We're here to brighten up your day. Grab a snack and take a seat. Let's dive in the fun's complete. Hey everyone, and welcome in for episode 49, I Chihuahua. We are your hosts, I am Jason. Hola, I'm Ray. And today, we're going to try some uh, Mexican-themed snacks, or Mexican cuisine-themed snacks, and we're going to talk about a little bit of facts and history, and maybe get into a couple games or something like that. Um, Ray, being part Mexican... Tell me about a little bit about your the Hispanic culture and your family. Um, well, it's very family oriented. I mean, like we have several cousins and stuff. We do everything, like all the birthdays and everything. It's all everybody comes over, so mm -hmm. it's pretty big. It, like every birthday is a get together. So. You guys, you guys do the giant uh thing where you guys get together. What is that around? Well, so okay. To so make all the tamales. Well, when we make tamales, we usually do it for Christmas. Yeah. And so we usually do it before, uh, before Christmas, but after Thanksgiving. So we usually was try to find time to just squeeze it in, or sometimes we'll just do it before Thanksgiving. Nice. Just knock it out of the way. I know your family's really tied in with the St. John's Church here in Lawrence. Yeah, and they, you guys do a lot with them. They we do a lot with the uh, fiesta and stuff. That's kind of like. My grandparents, they were, like, kind of the first generation to start that. So, yeah, all that authentic food, that's mm -hmm. that's basically what I grew up on. Yeah. So. Nice. So you get to judge this stuff. Yeah. Um, Let's see. First thing that we have is Cullen, Cousin Willie, which he does not look <laughs> Hispanic. <laughs> Cousin Willie's uh, Taco Fiesta and this is spicy taco fiesta popcorn. But mm -hmm. this is kind of Mexican tied. Not only is it taco flavored and it says fiesta. Yeah. But popcorn was invented in Mexico. Yeah, it is a it is a so. Hispanic kind of uh cuisine. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, it was kind of I think it was discovered by accident. Mhm. Mm I like that. Oh, this is a little spicy. It's not bad. That is pretty good. Yeah, that's a good snack if you want like spicy popcorn. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't hate it. It's not too spicy though either. Mm -hmm. I'll give that a 10. Mm hmm. Toss a little bit of hot sauce on that. And... All right. Let's set that over there. Okay. <clears throat> the next thing that we have is Mexican chocolate almond. And this is by Filo's Walking Tamales. And these are also not that Mexican or Sofrito Foods uh, out of Geneva, Illinois. Oh, it does say made in Mexico. Okay. It's distributed. So huh. this is actually okay. Mexican. Um, hmm. I definitely want to try this. So it's in a pocket. Yeah. It's usually okay. in a corn husk. It smells good. It, it smells kind of like a brownie. Really dark. <laughs> well, I mean, what flavor is it? Uh, it's Mexican chocolate. So, like, mole? Huh. Mexican chocolate almond. Smells very... Corn bar. Yeah. Smells very... It's mm. hot. Yeah. It's supposed to warm them up. That's what it says oh, on the really? packaging. Kind of like a... It's a chocolate tamale. Oh, so it's Guys, chocolate. it's yeah. a chocolate tamale. Oh my god. 
How in the hell? Mm. Okay, now I know what we're making. <laughs> we're changing some stuff up now. <laughs> mm. That's not bad. So, I suggested a couple of years ago taking um, Cheetos and blending up, like the flaming Hot Cheetos, mm-hmm. and blending up and mixing in with the masa to make tamales. Yeah. And man, like, all of my white friends came for my head. They're just mm. like, no, don't leave it. And then, like, some of my Mexican friends were just like, you know, like, he might be onto something. Might try that. <laughs> mm. Okay, not bad. I like it. That is literally what it is. Just chocolate corn yeah, bar. It's a chocolate tamale. Mm-hmm. Except there's no filling, filling but you know. oh shoot, they should have made it like a lava cake. <laughs> that would have been good. Well, I know somebody that they do cinnamon sugar in the What's what? I that's half of it. I already ate half. Um, but they do uh, cinnamon sugar on the outside. Yeah, and then they do a uh, strawberry pastry filling on the inside of theirs. We make sweet ones, Mm -hmm. um, but we just put, like, cinnamon sugar in the center of it. Okay. This one is Bean Salsa Roja. Did I pronounce that right? Roja? Red. Red. Roja? Yeah, Roja. Okay. It means red. And this one is medium. So, hopefully it's not hot as shit. Okay. We shall see. They're just the they're ju- it's just the masa is all this is. Yeah, with the beans mixed in with it. Oh, Shit. oh, oh! Good save. Almost dropped it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, you can taste the frijoles. That's great. Mm-hmm. Wow, it's like a bean dip. You know, uh-huh. it tastes like a spicy bean dip, but. In the masa. Dude. I need these to, are not bad. I don't remember where I got these, but I need to figure it out. Yeah. I do not hate these. You know, I've, I've had, I've seen like tamales in the can. Those are like the worst things. Um, But like this in the, in the pouch, I mean, yeah, it's weird, but I, I really like it. It's not bad. It depends on where you get the tamales in a pouch because I've had some that are actually decent. Mm -hmm. Mm. Those are good. Yeah. Yeah, Those are really good. Philo's walking tamales. Mm. Okay. Now I have corn nuts and these are loaded taco. I love me some corn nuts, but... Every once in a while, they jump up and and get you, and I'm worried that like I'm gonna break <laughs> a tooth, choke you. <laughs> no, worried about Crown's breaking a tooth. Crown's gonna fall off. Ah, there we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> gonna break a tooth on that bag. <laughs> yeah. Ended up ripping it further than I meant to. <laughs> there you go, corn nuts. Mm-mm-mm. I, wow, okay, I forgot how hard they were. They're really crunchy. Mm-hmm. I like I those. Like, I feel like we should do ASMR with all the crunch sounds. <laughs> There's probably some, some chick that gets off on this. <laughs> it's like, oh, I, yeah, like, I love the way they smack their We're lips. somebody's fetish. <laughs> We have one person that probably <laughs> tunes in just to hear. Mm. So it, it's not really hot. No. Mm-mm. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. It tastes just like regular corn nuts. Yeah. With taco seasoning on yeah. it. Okay. These are Zach's Mighty Rolled Tortilla Chips, and these are chili lime flavored. And 
It says heat loading, which looks like you did not get us enough damn water. I told you to get the big cups. It's all right. That's all right. I got mine. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, asshole. <laughs> I'm going to kick you in the free holidays. <laughs> you mean webbles. Yeah, whatever. Come on, means come on, eggs, come on. I mean, testicles are like Ooh, eggs, that's, so. that's just gotta... Now, I hope I'm not disappointed with these, because I... Me and Bailey tried some chips a couple episodes ago. They smelled really hot, and then you're just like... Dude. No, they were stale. Oh, what? Really? Must have mm. been like a hole in the bag or something. Hey. That, ha that happens sometimes. These like aren't the stale. Pop, you know? And they're not spicy either. Those are good. Mm. Oh, those are good. I like those. Yeah. Give me some sour cream or some some queso to dip these in. Dude, some like uh, cream cheese dip. Okay. Is queso a white people thing, or is it actually a Mexican thing? Uh, I don't know. Because I, mean, I know like it's just melted cheese. Well, I mean, like queso. That I know, I know, cheese down there is called queso. Yeah. But. That could be anything from, like, shredded cheese to... Yeah, this is what we call cheese. Yeah, but, like, I know I know there's a lot of, like, Mexican cuisine that, like, we eat here. Yeah. That, like, you go down there, you're not going to find anything like it. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, we have it. We don't have nacho cheese, but, like, mm -hmm. yeah, we can make... That white, like the Blanco um, queso, you know? Like the cheese dip you would get at a Mexican restaurant. I like those. I didn't bring any tequila. Sorry. Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, that would have been good. Some Jose Cuervo. Okay. Some shots. Do some flaming hot shots. I got some Pringles Street Taco. Bursting with flavor. Pringles usually has some pretty good flavors. Yeah, they're pretty good. Hmm. Is it, does it say it's spicy? No. I'm getting a small mm. street taco flavoring or smell. Okay. I definitely taste the taco part. It smells like the powdered. Um, Consume and uh, smells like consume but powdered with cilantro. Yeah, that's all I'm getting. It's not terrible. It's got a lot of sodium in it. I can really taste like the lime, like the lime in the cilantro. But that is a lot of salt, though. I don't think. I'm gonna... I'm gonna finish with this one and I'll hit it. How much sodium is in this? Too much. 240. Shit. We're gonna get out. <laughs> Alright. Two hundred and forty milligrams per a container. Or six servings per container. So if you eat that whole thing. That's almost 2,000 milligrams of salt. God damn. Okay. <laughs> We're like, why are my ankles so swollen? <laughs> Doctor's like, yeah, that's all just gish. <laughs> okay, so these are... Damn it. I got hard. Uh, <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> these are the tahine peach rings. Oh, peach rings. Oh, gummy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like them. When I picked these up at our local Sprouts, but you can start to see the stuff with tahini in it like everywhere. Everybody likes it. Mm -hmm. But it's not that hot, though. Some of them are.
Yeah, this one doesn't taste hot at all. Mm. But it's good. Okay. So, another thing that was invented in Mexico was chocolate. Yeah. And so I've got these chocolate covered gummy bears. Ooh. You ever had chocolate covered gummy bears? No. I can't remember if they're regular gummy bears or they're cinnamon. <laughs> or the THC kind. <laughs> no. The tripping balls later. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's just regular. What kind of chocolate is it? Is this milk chocolate? I think so. Sorry. That's oh, pretty good. Mm hmm. I thought what type of gummy bear that is. You know what's good about it though? Mm hmm. The gummy bears are actually gummy and not like rock hard, you know? Oh, yeah. Because a lot of times, if you get a chocolate covered gummy, the gummy underneath it is not gummy. It's like mm -hmm. solid as a rock. And you're like, what the hell? So. Oh, wake up. Mm. Well, not bad. So now we're going to get into some of the inventions that have came from Mexico. And this is current inventions and also historical. And this comes from lifepersona.com. And this article is called The 30 Most Important Mexican Inventions. Um, I'm not going to read them all. I'm not going to read them in order. But yeah, we're going to talk about them. Um, the color TV was invented Ooh. in Mexico. Um So, it was invented by a 22-year-old by the name of Guillermo Gonzalez Camarina, and he, let's see, in 1940, at the age of 22, he developed a system of transmission of color images for television. Mm -hmm. Um. And he financed it with royalties paid to him for a song that he wrote named Colorado River. And then in 42, he obtained the patent for it. And then four years after that, he made a color diffusion uh, for some offices in New Mexico City. And he founded the... Oh, oh, oh. Jesus. That's all right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the guy is still alive that invented it. That's pretty interesting. Whoa, how old is he? Well, he was 20 in 1940, <laughs> so that's putting him close to 100 years old. Yeah, he's almost 100 years old. Which, that's as of the writing of this article. I don't know if he's still, still alive. Yeah. Um, ch 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 chocolate, as we mentioned, was invented in Mexico. Um, cocoa has been cultivated by many cultures for at least three millennia in Mesoamerica. Um, cacao. What? Yeah, cacao. Yeah. Um, beverages starting back with chocolate as early as 1900 BC have been discovered. And it was a lot more bitter. Um, yeah. And it's roasted and grounded before it's used. Okay. Tortilla machines. The first one was created in 1904 and produced 16,000 tortillas a day. And in 47, 
they developed a model that in 1947 they developed a fully automatic um uh version of it that allowed for industrialization so that's pretty cool the anti anti contraceptive pill was invented so a young chemist Luis Ernesto Miramontes invented a synthetic progesterone that could replace injections for women who suffered miscarriages. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Tridilos, what is that? You know about Pancho Villa? Hmm? Pancho Villa was the uh, like revolutionary. We're getting there. Uh, general. Oh, okay. We're still on inventions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anti graffiti painting was dis- or was invented there. Um, Deletum was uh, Deletum three thousand is a paint that causes spray paint to slip off on any surface. What? And has been manufactured huh. since 2002. Huh. Crazy. That's so basically, crazy. you can't spray paint stuff. <laughs> uh, indelible ink is a substance that is absorbed by skin cells and lasts up to 24 hours, and it has helped prevent electoral fraud. Hmm. What? How does that work? I don't know. Uh, first used in 94 in the elections. Oh, Its okay. success made this substance quickly acquired by other countries to ensure electoral transparency. Hmm. Okay, so they used it to like make sure the ballots were real. Yep, I guess That's so. That's cool. Sound 13... Is a Mexican creation of the musician Julian Carrillo, or Carrillo, yeah. yeah, who in 1926 wanted to break the musical theory. Its objective was to experience new sounds and to transcend the music scale of twelve notes, five flat and seven pure, Dis- distance by half tones. Um, ch- 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 so he created what were called microtones or 13 sound which represented non-traditional units within the music scale that are located between traditional half tones. Huh. Hmm. That's kind of cool. Interesting. Do 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 breakwater. What is breakwater? Uh Okay, so breakwater was invented by a Mexican engineer, and it was a fast and economic system of piers. Why does it say piers twice? Piers and breakwaters based on the filling of sacks in the sea with sand and cement. So it kind of helped oh, put okay. up. Yeah. So, like, Docks and stuff. Yeah. Uh, The 3D television was invented in 2003. Created a device called TD Vision, which is possible to visualize images in three dimension. Hmm. The Guitar Mexican. What is that? A six-string, deep-body cello traditionally played in mariachi bands. Similar to the guitar, it is not derivative of that instrument, but it was developed independently. Because of its large size, or because its large size gives it volume, it does not require electrical amplification or amplification for performances in small places. Hmm. I always thought they just played with a regular guitar. I didn't really ever pay attention. 
uh, popcorn, as we mentioned, invented by the Zapotec people and later presented to Her- Hernan Cortez by the Aztecs. Uh, chewing gum. The Aztecs used chewing gum as a base to make a substance that was used to pick up everyday objects. Women in particular used this gum to freshen their mouths. I mean, yeah? Isn't that what it's... Yeah. Uh, Molka jet? Molka... Mocajete. Mocajete? What is that? It's a little bowl that they have with a stick, but it helps you grind foods and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I was letting you... Testing my knowledge, huh? Yeah. Um, Kahlua. The drink contains rum, corn syrup, and vanilla. Have you had Kahlua, right? I've had Kahlua, yeah. Kahlua's good. Margaritas, those are great. Nachos are great. The paddle is a racket sport. Okay, paddle is a racket sport that in the United States and Canada is known as paddle. Of course. I don't know what that was. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, The card game, three card Monty. Ball game, what is this? So yeah, they've invented a lot of stuff. Guacamole, um, things like that. A lot of food-based things, um, which is always good because Mexican food is the best. Um, These facts come from thefactfile.org. Ray, participate. What? I don't know. Okay. Today... The cap or what is today? What today is Mexico City was the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. Tenochtitlan. Is that how you pronounce it? Tenochtitlan. I think you're making that up. So click it. It'll pronounce it for you. No, it won't. Yeah, click it. Oh. No, it won't. Click pronounce. Go back. Click on that. It's Tenochtitlan. Okay, whatever. All right, we're good. Uh, okay, so these comes from the factfile.org, as I said. Um, Aztec sacrificed about 250,000 people, or about 1% of their population, each year. They did this to please their gods. The sacrifices were usually slaves or prisoners. You made it out okay. <laughs> uh <laughs> The Mayans and Aztecs uh, existed between the 12th and 15th century, and they resided in Mexico about 13,000 years ago. I don't don't think they've... Have they found bodies? Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Like all the sacrifices? Not all, no. That's what I'm wondering. Uh, how How do they know all of that if... They were like, well, we saw them do it. <laughs> like, did you stop them? <laughs> Mexico was under Spanish rule for more than three centuries between 1500 and 1821. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. Um, do, do, do. A tower containing more than 650 human skulls of women men and children was unearthed in Mexico City in 2017. Archaeologists are doing more excavating and it's potential, potentially possible that many more skulls will be found in the new... Jeez, that's crazy. Yep. Uh, indigenous people make up about 21% of Mexico's population. Michoacan. Hmm? Michoacan. Mm-hmm. Oh, read that. Dem- Demania? Damiana? Demania. Is a wild shrub that grows in Mexico and was historically used mostly to increase sexual desire. Ew. <laughs> wonder if that's what Spanish flies made out of. <laughs> Who Probably. knows? Uh, the average citizen of Mexico works about 2,200 hours or a oh, year. Or 43.2 hours a week. Uh, yeah, I feel that. 
other co- I mean that's not really <laughs> that much. I mean I I've there's I usually work 40 hours a week. But yeah. Honestly, there's sometimes where it's like add another 16 on there. Other countries that make this top 5 in this category include Costa Rica, South Korea, Greece, and Chile. Really? I thought the US would make that list. I guess we have a bunch of so many white collar people that put in yeah. 12 hours a, a month and yeah, call it good. Um, the Angel of Independence Monument is located in Mexico City. The monument was built in 1900 and is approximately 150 feet tall. And it symbolizes victory and independence for Mexican people. Eight of the 52, I guess that includes territories, eight of the 52 U.S. states and territories exist on the land that used to be, used to belong to Mexico. Um, Is there anything else cool? Yeah, because like tourism is a big part of their, their uh economy. Oh, yeah, Cancun and all yeah. that. Yeah. Um most most of Mexico is scary though. Uh there's a just lot of don't it, talk it shit about the cartel. Don't I mean. go to don't go to your mate well actually no the most of the issues pop up in like the deserts and stuff. No, I'm still not fucking uh, cartel. after Brazil and Argentina, Mexico is the third largest country in Latin America and the fifth largest in the Americas. Yeah. Yeah. Tequila. Ooh. Yeah, agave. Tequila is made from agave, agave, which is a native plant to a town called Tequila, located in the state of Jalisco. Jalisco, Mexico. Tequila is also responsible for women's for clothes falling all off. All sorts. Of, <laughs> yeah, well, that's a. It's also responsible for a lot of. <laughs> A lot of crazy stories from from <laughs> post high school. Uh, I've drank like half a bottle one time and then just blacked out. And I was like, "Where, where are my pants?" Ooh, you know this. <laughs> Woke the up, like, the next third started puking. The third largest pyramid in the world is in Cholula, Mexico. Oh wait, the Great Pyramid of Cholula in yeah, Mexico. Cholula. Cholula, like the hot sauce. Um. Did you know that the pinata actually came from Europe? According to this, it was a Mexican event invention. Uh, no, it was it came from Spain. Spain, yeah, in the 16th century. But I mean, we had already similar traditions in yeah the Mayan tradition, yeah, and that was mostly um, like they would blindfold them and then you'd use a stick to hit the thing. <clears throat> hmm. Usually be made out of like this is interesting wood shell or something. Okay, so Mexico has the world's largest population of Spanish speakers at 121 million, and this is as of, as of 2015. Damn, that's a lot of people. The U.S. is second on the list with 52, 52. million, and then after that is. 48 million with Colombia and then 46 in Spain. So Spain is like fifth or fourth in the world in Spanish. <laughs> it's like where it originated from. And then it's just like, yeah, we're the yeah. last ones to speak it. <laughs> Not going to lie. Sometimes my favorite thing to do when somebody like comes up like really aggressive to me, you know, like, why'd you do that? And it's like, okay. They're like, oh, uh, oh, he doesn't speak English. <laughs> Mexico, and then I just walk away. <laughs> Mexico City has the largest taxi cab fleet in the world. Any idea how many they have? Well, now you're fucking looking. I, <laughs> I have no 100, idea. 100,000 taxis. Jesus Christ. That's crazy. That's a lot. Surprise. I guess Uber is not down there yet. <laughs> uh, I don't think you want Uber down there in Mexico. Honestly, majority Have you seen their drivers. Their drivers majority suck. of guns in Mexico are smuggled in from the U.S. That is true. There's only one gun shop in Mexico where people can buy guns legally. Um, they 
there's actually some support for the wall from Mexico because they're like mm-hmm. keep our keep the guns out, you know. Yep. Um, <laughs> do do do. Everyone here is like keep the people out. <laughs> it's not gonna I keep people know, out. Let's fly really... the fuck over. <laughs> We don't have enough people, in my opinion, we don't have enough Americans working jobs no. that would, like, the, the with, without Hispanics here, this country's, this country's infrastructure would collapse. Yeah, probably. Um, tsh, tsh, tsh. Mexico City is the most traffic congested city in the world. Oh. Oh, wow. Um, Interesting. Mexicans working in the U.S. send two billion dollars every month to their families in Mexico. That's true. That wouldn't surprise me. I have, I have uh, Hispanic friends, and there's like it'll be like seven of them living in like a three or four bedroom apartment. Yeah, and they work their asses off, and they spend very little. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know a couple of people who like go down to Western Union and send mm-hmm. money. And they just transfer it down there. Bullfighting is a 500 year old tradition. That came from Spain, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mexico has the second largest population of Roman Catholics. We were talking about that earlier. Oh, yeah. I'm, After I'm Brazil. I'm definitely Catholic. Um, artists can pay their taxes using artwork. Again, this stuff is coming from the factfile.org. Um, we're just kind of kind of reading through these and kind of kind of reacting um, Santa Ana the famous Mexican general had a state funeral for his leg for his amputated leg the that kind of reminds me I think I think like Dolly like my leg died <laughs> so fuck? like Dolly Parton I think has insurance like on her boobs and there's like what yeah and then there's like a baseball player and like the, oh the, in like the 60s that had a uh, insurance policy on his arm <laughs> And oh, like he blew, shit. he blew it out, and they had to pay him out for it. Oh um, my god! Uh, Would you get that insurance, and they like know. insure you, and then you just injure Dude, yourself? Could you imagine being a porn star and getting that on your? your, <laughs> <tongue>? <laughs> your t- <laughs> like, this is I'm my like, livelihood. Oh, it, okay, <laughs> I need this to work. It's not They're working like, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, my insurance will cover it. <laughs> Popcorn was domesticated nine thousand years ago. What what does it mean domesticated? Like did it run wild or something? <laughs> like like it was popping all over the yeah. field. Then we popped it in our homes. <laughs> uh the 34th they were, they were probably just throwing it on the fire. The 34th like, Mexican the president ruled for less than 60 minutes before quitting. Is it that hard of a job? I don't know. Don't you have like whatever what, their what year was it? Whatever their uh I don't know. Like, whatever their equivalent of Congress is. Um, San Francisco is part of Mexico. We know this. Um, ooh, here we go. Families play a significant role in Mexican society. We know this. You already said that. Uh <sighs> Elders are well respected in the family. That needs to come back some. Yeah, for real. <laughs> uh, ch- 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 oh, here we go. Mexico is the tenth most populated country in the world. Approximately 130 million people. Do, do, do. By area, Mexico is the 14th largest country in the world. And the dahlia is Mexico's national flower. There's like a volcano the black in Mexico. Dahlia. Too. Yep. What's it called? C- Comilla. There's uh, there's an L. Colima. No, it's Coima. Okay, if you say so. If you're wrong, you lose your card. <laughs> My green card. <laughs> yeah. Can't no, make those it's... jokes. <laughs> Oh, why? Because um, I'm Mexican. <laughs> 34% of Mexico's land is covered in forest. That's that's true. I knew that. There's also a lot of it that is desert. Um, There are 31 states in Mexico. Oh, I didn't Chihuahua. know that. 
Chihuahua is the largest of all. Hi, Chihuahua. <laughs> and Mexico has one federal district. There are, okay, 68 official languages in Mexico. Hmm. It's a lot. Well, yeah, I mean, it is a nation. Everybody speaks a different language, isn't it? I mean, I don't know how many we have. Uh, Mexico is one of the top consuming soda countries in the world. Of course, because they have the good, Yeah, because like, they have actual sugar. In they the have country. the good they don't, they don't sugar. They don't use just corn yeah. syrup. Um, tch, 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 Mexico. <laughs> they also have pretty bad dental. And they also have the Rio Grande. They have which pretty is, bad dentistries down there. Which is the longest river there. Do, 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 do. Scroll through, see if I can find something cool. What about the Day of the Dead? Does it talk about that? Um, ooh, Mexico is the world's largest producer of silver, followed by Peru, of all places, and China. Well, the Day of the Dead is pretty I'm popular. Getting I'm getting there. Uh, cactus is actually hard to find in most parts of Mexico. Yeah, they don't really grow like everybody think. Like all the cartoons that they draw, like back in the day, it's like no, there's no, there's not like cactuses on the mm -hmm. side of the road. That's more like in New Mexico and. Arizona. The best Mexican food, of course, comes from street vendors. Yeah. Dress code in Mexico is strict, and bus drivers wear suits. There you go, oh, Ryan. Yeah, if true. you were down in Mexico, you would have to wear a suit. Do, do, do. Uh, oh, down in Mexico. So we ran into this. Um, I worked at a printing place, and we had a lot of Hispanic uh, temps that work there. And they would, fl like, we had to keep trash cans in the bathroom stalls because they would throw their toilet paper in the trash can. Yeah. Because they don't have, their their plumbing isn't designed to handle that down there. Yeah, they, so, don't, yeah. they don't flush it. They're like, dude, don't, don't flush the toilet paper because it won't. Yep. It won't degrade fast enough in order to go through. It'll just clog up the pipes. Drunk drivers in Mexico are simply asked if they have been drinking. If they say no, they are free to go. What the fuck? That's crazy. <laughs> like, you drunk, dude? No. Fuck. <laughs> Takes this. <laughs> the fuck? Jeez. Uh... National sport in the country is called charia, charia, which displays distinctive horsemanship techniques. Interesting. I want to see what that hmm. is like. Spell that for me. Mex. I don't know. Uh, Mexican professional wrestling is called lucha libre. I am a huge fan of lucha libre. Um. Yeah. Wrestling? I grew up watching the yeah. cruiserweight division in WCW. Where you had the likes of like El Dandy and uh, Humuntu Guerrero and Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio Jr., um, La Parca, and there was all sorts of, of great Hispanic wrestlers. Um, yeah. Do, do, do. Let's see what else we got. Um, what is that? Mexican tamale weighs around 150 pounds and is three foot long. What is that? You know, uh, uh oh, holy shit. <laughs> Maybe that's like the biggest. I don't know. The country introduced corn, chilies, and chocolate to the rest of the world. We know that. Um, it is home to a rare breed of rabbit, which usually only lives near volcanoes. Oh, those things are thick, too. They're, like, weird. They're, like, ball-shaped. Yeah. <laughs> um, kids do not, or rarely receive gifts on Christmas Day. Knew that. The University of Mex, the National University of Mexico is the oldest university in North America. 
and it was founded in 1551. And the earliest printing press in North America was used in 1539 in Mexico City. Okay, hmm. so shortly after the Spanish arrived in the Americas, um, around like 1519, mm-hmm. they had, um, we had to like raise cattle and like, you know, livestock. So we literally used horses and stuff to like drive the cattle, you know? Mm-hmm. So th- basically, cowboys originated in Mexico. Yeah. They were called. Yaqueros. So, that's pretty cool. <laughs> All the cowboy fans are like, that's fucking bullshit! <laughs> the Caesar salad was invented in Mexico. Oh. By an Italian-American restaurateur and chef. Caesar Cardini, I think. Wasn't it his it was name? The... Did, it, did it say his name? Yeah. Caesar Cardini. Cardini. Quick facts about drug trafficking. Where did that go? <laughs> Talk about drugs. That's what it said. I can't find it. Damn it. Oh, wait, wait. Three. Is that where that it is? Do, do, do. That's crazy. Okay, so. Oh, that's just the references. Yeah, so like I said, this is the factfile.org, and it was 101 interesting facts about Mexico. Now, as requested, this is discoverwalks.com, and this is this article is called 20 Mexican Traditions and Customs You Should Know About. And it was written by... Do, 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 not on there. Okay. Fiestas. So their fiestas are usually filled with food, music, dancing, fireworks, and games. Um usually for the children. And they are a moment to honor and pay tribute to departed loved ones. Oh, sorry. Dia de Muerto is among the most well-known fiestas. That is a moment to honor and pay tribute to the departed loved ones. Yeah, it's usually like the Mm -hmm. days, like a day before the 1st of November. So... Yeah, you know, Halloween and it is observed on November first and second. Yep. And word for word, I'm gonna go ahead and, and read it just because it's the best explanation. It is a moment to honor and pay tribute to departed loved ones. The celebration combines Catholic teachings with customs from the indigenous people of Mexico. The indigenous inhabitants of Mexico thought that transitioning to another existence after death was not the end of life by constructing altars and placing gifts of food drink and flowers at the graves of their loved ones they commemorate the deceased dia de muertos has become a vibrant and joyous event if you would Um, like to learn more about this please watch coco (laughs) that movie is great that is one of my favorite it's such a colorful beautiful movie dude that movie is really descriptive and it's very it it really does show yeah the Mexican culture. I want one of those little dogs. <laughs> I can't think of what they're called. <laughs> the little, the little, uh, what is it? Dante? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. El Grito de Dolores is the cry, or the cry of Dolores. It is the honor of the beginning of the Mexican War of Independence. And it's on September 15th. And, uh, yeah. People, oh, crowds assemble in public places to hear the president yell Viva Mexico from a balcony. Viva Mexico. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Interesting. Um, Cinco de Mayo, which we have had a Cinco de Mayo episode, and it honors the Mexican army's victory against French soldiers. And that is the 5th of May, as we've been over. Um, It is not Mexican Independence Day, despite what people think. But this was the Battle of Puebla that was fought in 1862. Uh, Carnival, which is is more traditionally celebrated in Brazil, 
but it is also celebrated through a lot of Latin America. And I mean, it's basically like parades, costumes, dancing, food, stuff like that. You know, just a, a giant traditional, um, basically a giant traditional fiesta. Um, Easter week is huge. It's a huge holiday for, for Hispanic culture. And then you have Fiestas Pat Patrias, and that is to celebrate their independence September from 16th. Spain, and that is September 16th. And that is kind of celebrated the same way. As as we do ours, it's patriotic music, it's fireworks, cuisine, floats, parades, marching bands, yeah. Uh, Ooh, Dia de la Virgin. No, Vitan. V. Vi you say Vitan. Vitan. De Guadalupe. De Guadalupe. Day of the Virgin of Guadalupe. Tell us about that, Ray. Uh, okay, so there's the story goes, uh, there was a man named Juan Diego who went up into the mountains, and he saw the Virgin Mary, and Juan Diego came back down and told the priest, "Hey, I saw saw the Virgin Mary," and he's like, "No, no, no, go back up there," and he didn't say anything. So he like goes back up there and he brings down this. It's like the middle of December too, mm -hmm. by the way, so it's freezing cold, and she gives him like like a whole robe full of roses and she's like here's some fresh roses go tell people that i'm here and then he like drops it on to the floor and it's like on his robe it's literally the impression of the virgin mary hmm. so and that's what's hanging up there in the uh in the cathedral down there in mexico mm -hmm. yeah it's got the uh uh our lady of guadalupe that's the original um nice like his robes um next one is dia de los reyes magos is that how it's pronounced yeah Maos. magos and that is the day of the three kings um and it is commemorated on january 6th and it commemorates the journey of the three kings who brought presents to the baby jesus of bethlehem Cool. So most of these holidays are very. Oh yeah, they're very Catholic. Um, tied. Catholic <laughs> yeah. Um, and kids in Mexico leave their shoes outside in the hopes that the three kings will fill them with gifts and candies. Oh, that's interesting. I forgot about that. Um, we didn't really do that, but we did leave our shoes. Outside and then families sometimes. get together for feasting and and stuff like that. Um, and then there's. Los Posadas, which is the night processions, and that is before Christmas. Um, it's a nine day religious festival, and this is where you stay inside. It honors Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem in search of lodging. And it goes from starts on December 16th and goes until Christmas Eve. Yeah, Posadas. Yep. That means. The whole like in, and then people visit homes every night singing old melodies and pleading for sanctuary. This is a recreation of Mary and Joseph's journey, serving as a reminder of value of kindness. Yep. Um, then you have Nocha Buena, which is Christmas Eve, and yeah, the get together for tamales and feasting, gifts, and yeah. And Alcohol, then, fruit, and spices. And then ponche. Navidad. Ponche. Do you know what that is? What's ponche? It's a beverage mixed with alcohol, fruit, and spices. Ooh. Yum. And then the Sermana Santa, which is a week long religious celebration called Sermana Santa, and it occurs before Easter in addition to various joyful customs like processions and bailas. Hmm. It's kind of a Holy Week thing. Festival de la. So this there is this festival de la. 
Guela Guza. Probably horribly pronouncing that. Um, but it's just a festival uh, in July of dances, music, crafts, stuff like that. Tacos. I mean, it just says tacos. That's not really a festival. They're just tacos, quesadillas, all delicious foods, burritos, sombreros. Okay, so the charia, um, the one that we were talking about, the, the horse. Yeah. It's kind of like a rodeo thing. So, okay, so the word charo um used to be kind of a slur uh it would be kind of you know the same as like when you call a a redneck a hick you know Mm -hmm. it's kind of like that but charo it it used to be charo mexicano and that would mean like oh he works on you know he's a ranchero yeah he works with the horses and stuff so that's why they're like that's why it was a slur because they were like yeah you do all Mm -hmm. the dirty work but that's why it's called charia is because it's derives from charo. So, and they just literally, that's all it is, is just riding horses. Okay, so sombreros, we know that they're wide-brimmed hats. They were typically made of straw or felt. Yep. And they were embellished with bands and feathers. Oh, yeah, th- there's some really nice ones oh, yeah. nowadays. So the word sombra means shadow. Yeah. And, yeah, they were used initially as sun protection, but they've really evolved into... Yeah, decorative and fashion. Decorative, yeah. yeah. Ooh, the Charo suits. Oh. And those are, like, the fancy, like, Day of the Dead type things. And they are kind of a dress apparel for, like, going out and stuff like that. Um, Traditionally worn by Mexican cowboys... Yeah. And yeah, yeah. they're usually yeah. Charles Mexicanos. They're usually black and made of black or brown wool and they're embroidered with silver and gold. Yep. So Yeah, all the buttons and stuff. That's what the mariachis cool. wear. Yep. I love and I love me some mariachi music. We're gonna go through some famous people in Mexico and then we are going to wrap up. Um, and this is from thefamouspeople.com, Mexico. We're going to read about famous people? Yeah. First Frida one we, Kahlo. Yeah, first one we have is Frida Kahlo. And she is a Mexican painter. And her birthplace is Coyoacan. I think I pronounced that right. And... Painted a lot of self-portraits, and she also painted a lot of stuff that's inspired by nature and artifacts of the cultures. Um, and not much was known until the late 1970s when her artwork was rediscovered by an art historian. And yeah, then she kind of kind of blew up from there. Um. Canelo Alvarez, which is a professional boxer. Oh, yeah. I've heard of him. He mm-hmm. is a... I believe he has fought in the Olympics. Um, yep, he's from Guadalajara. Mm-hmm. Then we have Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo which, del Toro. Yep, which is a famous... Also from Guadalajara. Filmmaker, yep. And he did Pan's Labyrinth, uh, Shape of Water, um, yeah, bunch of bunch of great movies. Um, not sure who that guy is. Anthony Quinn um, was an actor and known for his uh, known for his. He's an Academy Award winning. Uh, he played in. Dungeon he was in Navarro. Lust for Life. He was in Viva Zap. Zapata, a um, bunch of other different movies. Then we have Julio Cesar Chavez, which was another famous boxer. Won ser- several world championships in three different weight classes. Do, do, do. Sergio Perez, the Formula One race car driver. He is from Guadalajara. 
It's a lot of Salma Hayek, which is Ooh. an actress who's in Foxy. a lot of movies. Grown Ups, she Grown Ups Two, fine. Wild Wild West, Dogma. Yeah, and she is from. I didn't, she was born in '66. God damn, it does not show. That's hey, that's just proof right there. Latinas and I can't. We always look. I can't even <laughs> pronounce where it. Cosa Colocos. Sure. We'll just go with that. Um. Sarah Ramirez. Um, I've seen her. She's in a bunch of stuff. I think she was like. She's in Grey's Anatomy. Anatomy. Yeah, that's where she is. Okay. She's uh, Dr. Torres from Grey's Anatomy. Bailey watched the hell out of that show. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Scrolling down. Alberto Del Rio, professional wrestler. <laughs> His real name. Hold on. Jose Alberto Rodriguez. Shashuan? No. Chukwan. Chukwan? Yeah. And he's also known as Alberto El Patron. And I think he re he is the first Mexican born WWE champion. Cool. Um I can't remember who he wrestles for now. I think it's triple A. Got a whole bunch of people. I'm trying to see if any of them jump out at me. I mean, hopefully physically not, but <laughs> Vicente Fernandez. Re, re, go, we'll go back up one more. Vicente Fernandez, famous singer. Uh, if anybody is like familiar with any sort of Mexican music, you're gonna know Vicente Fernandez. I. It sounds familiar. Yeah, like all of his music was playing. You, if you nine, if you grew up in a Hispanic household, your grandma played that. <laughs> played his music. Nine Latin Grammys, fifty million albums sold. That's a lot. Juan Gabriel. That's another Mexico's singer. Elvis Presley. Yeah, your grandma also probably played him too. Emiliano Zapata. Mm hmm. Leader of the Liberation Army of the South. Yep. Yeah. Man, there was one that jumped out at me earlier when I was scrolling through this. Oh, Montezuma. Montezuma. I can't remember the other one. Enrique, read that one again. Bob? Enrique Pine Nieto. He was the 64th president of Mexico. They've got a lot more presents than us. Yeah. yeah Laura Heron. She was okay. And... She was Hispanic woman crowned as Miss USA. Um, and she's been in some movies. I can't remember what all, but <laughs> who's the who's the Latin singer that was killed? Uh, Selena. Selena. Yeah. Was she actually from Mexico? Uh, I don't think so. Or is she just Hispanic? She's just Hispanic. Okay. I wasn't sure. I'm pretty sure she was born in America. Sin Cara. He's another wrestler. Oh, cool. Yeah. I don't know. Kat Von D. Hold on. I didn't know that she was the famous tattoo artist. I didn't know that she was Hispanic. Did I you? I didn't know her. Yeah, you do. I don't remember. Miami Inc. I don't know that. Or LA Inc. I never watched Oh, those. you've probably seen her. You probably <laughs> just don't realize it. She probably um, gave me my tattoo. <laughs> but yeah, she... I didn't know she was from Mexico. That's cool. Does it talk about um, Ponto Villa? Uh, I haven't came across them yet, but... I'm surprised. We're also like... Oh, Ray Mysterio Sr. This is Ray Mysterio Jr.'s uncle of actually. Um, which is kind of weird. I've never heard of 
and I guess it's maybe because it's a stage name and not a um not an actual like name name. Sexy Star, she is a professional wrestler. Mystico is a professional wrestler, yeah. So there is a ton of Hispanic professional wrestlers. Um I was going to say, I'm probably, yeah, it's just, I'm just spinning. El Santo. Look at that guy. He's like dressed as a tin man. Mil Mascaras. So I could spend all day scrolling through there. But, um, but yeah, so we learned, we learned some stuff about Mexico that I didn't know. We should have an episode dedicated to Pancho Villa. With, well, because I mean, up, there's a lot of stuff, and we'll buy it to like recover start digging it. up facts about him and and everything like that, and we'll we'll do it. It's a lot. Of, it's a really long history that we have to. Okay. No, I don't think we can cover it in like two minutes. We'll do some actual Mexican food from one of the restaurants, and hell yeah, and yeah, we'll talk about Pancho Villa. Yep. But yeah, um, gracias for tuning in. And hope everyone has a good night. Right? Later, y'all. Later.